Cisco routers use several different modes that determine which tasks you can perform. After a successful login, the console is in user exec mode. When working with the router, use the router prompt to keep track of the mode you're in. The prompt shows the name of the router and one or more characters that indicate the current mode. The user exec mode is identified with the angled bracket. This mode lets you view only some basic information about the router. For security reasons, you can view detailed router configuration information and modify the router configuration files only in more privileged modes. To view detailed configuration information, we must enter privileged exec mode. Privileged exec mode is also called enable mode because we type the enable command to enter privileged mode. As a security feature, you should protect the privileged mode with a password. Note that the prompt has changed. It now ends with a pound sign instead of an angle bracket. This shows that we are in privileged mode. In this mode, we can display status reports, view the router configuration, copy the router configuration files to other locations, and restart the router. However, modifying the router configuration files can only be done in a configuration mode. To enter the router configuration modes, use the configure command. Follow this command with the terminal parameter, meaning that you will be configuring the router from a console or terminal. Notice that the prompt has changed again. Watching the prompt is very important as you configure Cisco routers because it shows you what mode you're in and thus what you can do. The config prompt indicates the global configuration mode. This mode lets you make configuration changes that affect the entire router, such as specifying a router name, configuring a banner, and enabling network protocols. To make changes to a portion of the router, such as assigning an IP address to a specific interface, you'll need to enter sub-configuration modes. For example, I've now switched to interface configuration mode. Again, note how the prompt has changed. Any commands I enter now apply only to the specific interface. There are several sub-modes that are used for specific configuration tasks for interfaces, sub-interfaces, routing protocols, and so on. You'll learn about these additional modes as you learn to perform specific configuration tasks. For now, let's leave all configuration modes. The exit command in any configuration mode backs up one level. Typing exit again in global configuration mode exits all configuration modes and returns to privileged exec mode. Alternatively, you can exit all configuration modes in one step using the control Z keystroke. Again, notice how the prompt has changed to indicate which mode you're in. Contrary to what you might think, don't use the exit command to leave privileged exec mode and return to user exec mode. If you do, the router closes your connection and logs you off. Instead, type disable to return to user exec mode. Here we are back at home in user exec mode. Note that the prompt has changed once more, displaying the user mode prompt with the angle bracket. Now we can type exit to close the session and log off the router. When working with the router, remember to watch the router prompt to keep track of which mode you're in. This list shows some common configuration modes and the corresponding router prompts.